I'm Alan Ross. I'm here at the IEEE PESTND, that's a lot of acronyms, conference. This is the 2020 version that is actually being held in 2022. These interviews that we're conducting is with thought leaders on the future of the power industry. So enjoy. My next guest is Josh Robinson. Josh is the head of business development for Iris, a company in Florida. Um, I've met the family. It's a family held, held and family run business. Beautiful family. <laughs> you got a great family, Josh. Thanks, Alan. But Josh, I, I'm so delighted you're here because here you were studying to be a doctor. <laughs> And when I first met you and I asked your father and I said, what the heck is he doing? <laughs> and, and then you, now you're here and you're the head of growth and the head of business development. You've made the right choice. Not that being a doctor was gonna be a bad choice for you, but you've made the right choice. I think so. I, okay. I'm definitely happy with my choice. Uh, I, so a little bit about my background. I, I went to school originally for business, grew up around businesses and uh, so I, I, I got a degree in business and, and got into it and thought maybe I should go and heal the world. So I started taking classes to, to go to med school. I got to the, the point where I could go and uh, decided I'm a businessman. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I came back into the, the business that my family built and uh, I'm going to take some ownership and, and take it to a whole nother level. Excellent. So world, let me just tell you this. You're still gonna get healed. It's just gonna be a different way because we're gonna talk about safety and healing and all that in a different way. Absolutely. So looking at the industry, um, and you can, you know, your, your family has been in the business for many, many years. Uh, safety and reliability are two big buzzwords for Iris. Um, but the world is changing. You've helped bring change to it. Uh, but what do you think is happening in the power industry? Now that could be, that could be in data centers, it could be in utilities, it could be you know, high voltage, medium voltage, low voltage, anything that changes. Now we obviously know electrification and transportation is gonna change yeah. everything. We also know that um, we have an aging infrastructure, changes everything. We also know we have too few people to work in these environments, changes everything. But uh, how do you see those kinds of changes impacting what you do? So, so right now, Iris are a solutions provider that, that make things that keep your equipment and assets in a closed and guarded condition so you can go up to the asset, interact with it while never putting yourself at risk. But the big thing in what we do is someone has to go up to the asset to interact with it. And like you said, the workforce is, is getting smaller. We don't have the skilled labor to go out and do the data collection and testing on the equipment. So I think we're gonna see a shift from in-person kinds of activities and testing, more to an IoT kind of space where it goes up to a cloud or comes to your management system and, and gives automated work orders, but the process takes manpower out of it and makes machine do the work for you. I see therein lies one of the problems and it is, there's a, a interoperability, the idea that we need connected systems because even here, you probably have 20 people offering the same approach to a problem, but they're all their approach. Right. And you know, the, the, all, the grid is not designed to have a standard. Most grids are fed, mandated by their federal governments and they're standardized. That's not the truth. We have 50 public service commissions talking to 11 utilities, all of them kind of standard. It's, it's very hard to standardize. Right. So as you're creating these IoT and these, these kinds of revolutionary solutions, um, they have to have an interoperability, AKA they have to be able to go into somebody else's system, data system, because data management is gonna be the key. Where does the data go? Who gets to see it? And in what form do they get to see it, correct? Right. And, and the, the thing with the data is, is that it has to play nice with other people. It's all well and good having one system that, that can collect your data, but if it doesn't disseminate it to the people that need to know it, like you said, then, then the data is essentially invalid. And that's what we're trying to do is, is make a system that will play nicely with everyone and, and share data from your equipment without having to have the manpower to go out there and take it personally. And that is interoperability, the exactly. ability to connect with other things. And there are, I had several people yesterday, they got the answer. No, they have one answer, but they want it to be their answer. Right. Yeah, the data goes into a place that only we have. And you go, well, what about if you bought somebody? Oh, no, no, you gotta buy ours everywhere. And nobody's gonna do that. That just has not happened. It's not the American way. 
you know, we're a bunch of mavericks and this and guy all... talks to this guy and this guy talks to this guy. Um, safety and reliability, is, I know, is a, a big mantra for Iris. Uh, it's, it's something that is not just words. You guys live by, in fact, your products and services. You might want to explain when you say go up to something. What is, so what is how did you start? So how did I start and what I do? Um, my dad started the business when I was seven, 25 years ago. And he was out there in, in, he started off with Ford. He was a mechanical engineer. And he went out and he sees someone in the field taking a thermal image of a piece of electrical equipment and said, hey, you know, what are you doing? So the guy told him what he was doing. Light bulb went off in his head, went home, remortgaged the house, bought an infrared camera. <laughs> then he went out there. I know him, and I know that would be like him. That's brilliant, brilliant. He went out and started beating the street. London ah. was his primary territory, and he started to do service work, looking at electrical assets and, and writing reports to give companies an idea of when their assets were going to fail so they could build a plan around making it better, fix things before they break, and, and make the world more reliable. At the same time, he realized that while he's in there doing these inspections, this gear is wide open and it can explode if there's a fault in the equipment, if, if you drop something in and it can result in an arc flash. Arc flash is an explosion in electrical equipment, it burns twice as hot as the sun. According to the Capshell Institute, they did a study and, and on average one person dies every day from an arc flash and, and that's really? unacceptable. So we figured that it's great to collect the data but our people are at risk and business's greatest asset is people. We're seeing that in a big way now because people are one of the, the hardest resources to come by for businesses. So we have to protect our people. So Martin came up with a way to look inside of a piece of equipment while keeping it closed and guarded. And that's how Iris came in. And then we went from there to developing different products within our wheelhouse. We have Thermoclips now, which are a clip that changes color to give you an indication there's a fault without a thermal camera. So you could be walking past your equipment and you could get an indication on temperature change by a clip or a label. It all goes towards keeping your gear, it, it, I, I keep coming back to closed and guarded, it's what NFPA say, that's, that's how you should interact with your equipment and that is the mantra of Iris, is allowing solutions to keep that at the forefront. Even down to our windows, if they were to open and something fail on them, they have a fail safe built in so the people can never hurt themselves with any product that Iris makes. That's excellent. And, I, and that is, um, so there you are, you're saving people. You don't have to fix them. Yeah. You, you, they're, if you save them, you don't have to fix them, right? It's, it's nicer to give them a solution to save themselves than to be the guy getting screamed at trying to save yeah. them. <laughs> that's right. So, uh, and that's one at a time. You can do this all over every time you have Windows installed or have Absolutely. safety clips, it, it's working. Um, I also know that one of the biggest changes taking place, as we talked about, is data acquisition. There are more monitors here than ever. Right. I mean, I went around and I have to just stop counting. But I, I think there are 20 new IoT type monitoring companies preventing, presenting some, hey, monitor my bushing, monitor my this, monitor the substation, all kinds of different monitors. Um, and, and I know that you guys are looking at uh, a whole division, an East Century, that looks at doing things differently. Tell me a little bit about that future. So, not to reveal too much, but the East Century and, and Delta T's, our IoT products that, that we have, they, they work great. They talk with, they, they, so East Century is a system where you go out into the field, you take data from your asset, and then you save it for an app to a card which an NFC card which sticks to the side of your equipment. You do your inspection, you write the data down in the app on your phone, tag it to the tag, and it goes up to the cloud. Your maintenance manager would get a live report of any data that was collected. You can also assign routes to your tech, so if you know you need a piece of equipment to be inspected, you can set an inspection request, then your tech will go out, do the inspection, and you'll get a live, time, a live report back that the, the data was collected. Then the Delta T is a permanently mounted sensor that, that takes wireless humidity and de temperature data from the equipment and then again sends it up to the cloud. But we've pulled both of those technologies back to make them play nice with other people. They already work fine. We have them in, in a couple of different test sites throughout the world. But it's all about making the data come back to one place. Like you say, there's, there's yeah. 20 companies out there. They all have a solution. 21 if you include mine but it's about making those 21 into one where all the data speaks into one place and we can action on it because there's no one technology that's the best technology. Right, right. 
infrared is where we started. Yeah. We also use ultrasound, corona, yeah. a partial discharge testing, motor current analysis. There are a thousand technologies out there that are all equally valid to getting data out of your equipment. And it's about getting them all into one place right. where, where they work together because it's, it's not about who's right, it's about what's right. And what's right. right is everybody. But we all need to be in one place where we can move forward so that the safety and reliability of an organization, which in my opinion are two sides of the same coin, you can't have great safety without great reliability and you're never gonna have great reliability without the safety aspect of things. I, that's my line. <laughs> no, no, I, we, we've It's like been, we've heard it before. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah I, I love that line because that is the Electric Power Reliability Alliance. That's what we stand for. And your, your dad and I believe electric power and safety and reliability. Are, he wants to take the P out and make it an S. I like ESRA, Electric Safety and Reliability Alliance. We might have to look into that. We might have to. <laughs> okay, it's good. Um, I was going to ask you your involvement with IEEE. We ask everybody that because we're gonna, this is an IEEE uh, event and uh, we do that. I'm going to take a different approach. I'm going to tell you why IEEE is a value. I'm also going to tell you what you'll experience. Okay. okay. When you get involved with IEEE, um, it's almost like the mafia. Okay. Now they're going to hate me saying this, but <laughs> you get in and you can't leave. It's just <laughs> like I keep, you keep pulling me back in. Um, it is an organization that believes in volunteerism. I mean, that's how we get things done. I'm a volunteer on two major committees, uh, the Smart Grid Committee, and Smart Grid is a program, it's not a committee. And then this Grid Edge Committee, Steering Committee, which will become an every other year. And then we're just about to do one in Istanbul. And my wife says, why do you, because I spend uh, probably a third of my time as IEEE volunteering. Okay. And the reality is I have learned more, I've met more really cool people that I think are brilliant or that are the future of this industry. Um, and it excites me, it wakes me up in the morning and I feel good about it, something I want to do. So I'm gonna encourage you to get in. It'll also frustrate you because we move slowly. We're a standards organization. Yeah. So we take a lot of people, it took six years to develop a new DGA standard for a gas guide, six years. That was a long time. My impatience is, what? It, and, and I know you, Josh. Okay. <laughs> However, consensus is hard to build, and you're trying to build a global, it's international, a global consensus. And you have people that are down at the molecule level. Drive me nuts. And then you have people at the problem. What we need is practitioners. We need more, and you are a practitioner. The people that are out in the power industry, they're practitioners. The people that are in the plants, they're practitioners. And I, I have a sense that we have gone far more academic than we need to get. And I think having more practitioners engaged will speed things along, but you'll be able to bring really, you know, what's happening in the marketplace, because that's what you're developing is not going to solve that problem. Here's the point. Every time we finish, the problem is moved. Right. So it's not being frustrated, but, but getting there. It is, um, some people do it for a career builder. Uh, that's a great reason if you're trying to build your career. You're not trying to build your career. You're in the family business. Uh, you, you've got your career defined for you. But it's a great place to network, meet people. And you'll meet somebody and go, oh, I know Ashish. He knows something about that. And you can pick up the phone. And I know you guys have been looking for a uh, firmware guy. I bet you there's 50 of them right around here that we could have connected who aren't happy working for some big company that beats them with a whip and feeds them a bowl of rice. <laughs> Not quite, but... I get okay. it. Okay, all right. <laughs> I, I, I love the organization as a whole. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a consortium of people who all have the same mindset to move forward and advance electrical safety right. and reliability. I'm, I'm all for it. I'm, I'm happy to be part of any of the, the boards that would have me, but... Uh, We'll, we'll see, I would love to get involved. We work by committee and I will make sure to include you in a committee. And, um, and you were, you're not allowed to tell me, what did you, you're not allowed to blame it on me, right? <laughs> because you will be blessed from having been part of it. Anyway, Fantastic. Josh, thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thanks for visiting with us. Thanks for your time, man.